This is Finished Work TV, a place of inspiration, wisdom, and revelation. As you listen and receive God's Word today, your life will never remain the same. God's Word is full of His power. The Word of God is full of power and the ability to bring healing. So when someone is sick, there is hope for them. When someone is going through health crisis, there is hope for them. The word of God is our source of hope and is the source of restoration. I said God's word is the source of hope. It's also the source of restoration. It, it doesn't matter how bad it is, God's word can make it good. It doesn't matter how bad it is, the word of God can make it good. So one of the key things we're going to look at this morning is that healing and health is the will of God. And don't ever let Satan tell you you are sick because of this or that. The voice of condemnation keeps people in captivity. I said the voice of condemnation keeps people in captivity. Don't let the enemy lie to you that this kind of disease or this kind of sickness can never go. Every sickness is subject to the word of God and the name of Jesus. Every sickness is subject to God's word and the name of Jesus. Every sickness is subject to the word of God and the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter how bad it is. In the name of Jesus, you can recover. And by God's word, you can recover. I'd like us to go to Proverbs chapter 4 from verse 20. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. Thank you, Father. Healing is in the word. It doesn't matter how it looks. Your healing is possible. A reoccurring problem can stop. A cycle of affliction can be broken by the power of God. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. And look at what he said here. My son, give attention to my words. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my saying. Give attention to my word. Jesus said, the words I speak to you, they are life and they are spirit. When God's word is spoken to us, it contains the energy of God that will cause your system to be revived, that can restore a part in your body that may be missing or an area in your body that is, uh, doesn't have the strength anymore to keep helping you. Maybe an organ in your body that is losing strength. God's word can bring strength to that area of your body. God's word can bring healing to that area of your body that looks like there is no healing. The word of God can bring healing to that area. And sometimes when people are sick, one of the things most people do is that they forget the word. Psalm 107 verse 20, Psalm 107 verse 20, Psalm 107 verse 20, he sent forth his word, Psalm 107 verse 20, he sent forth his word and his word healed them. The healing power of God is within his word. The healing power of God is within his word. So when I take the word, I'm taking my medicine. Maybe the fear of death is uh, actually tormenting someone. Maybe you're listening to me or you're watching me. The fear of death. Maybe I'm about to die. Maybe something is going to happen wrong to me. No, you don't have to believe in that. The scripture said, well, long life will I satisfy you. God's word was given to us as our advantage. So the word of God is a medicine and you can take that medicine every day. God's word is your medicine. Whenever you start taking scriptures, healing scriptures, you know, in third John verse 2, he said, I, uh, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in good health even as your soul prosper. Third John verse 2. Third John verse 2, he said, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in good health even as your soul prosper. The prosperity of your soul will lead to the prosperity of your body. 
The prosperity of your soul will lead to the prosperity of your body. Like I taught in the first service, I said one of the reasons why people can be sick most time is when they worry about their bills. When they worry about their situation, when they worry about things happening in their life, look at my life. I, I was sharing that there is no need to compare your life to people. The worst thing you could do is to begin to put your life and then compare yourself. Look at these people. Uh, I, I'm even older than them. I'm even better than them. But look at how they are associating. Things like that brings in toxic energy. It brings in the wrong energy into your life. And sometimes when people begin to worry, the next thing you will see, they begin to have health crisis. I shared so much about that in the fourth service that you need to stay out of worry, fear, and anxiety. Otherwise, it's going to have a wrong impact on your health. Yes. And that is why the scripture said, casting all your cares on him that he cared for you. You need to put your cares on God. Not on your husband, not on your wife, not on your friend, not on your governor, not on your pastor. You cast your cares on God. The scripture said in Hebrews chapter 12, let's take it in this picture, Hebrews 12 from verse 1 and 2. In verse 1 it said, it said, lay aside every weight. There are weights, there are weights you need to lay aside. Part of that weight is worry. Part of that weight is anxiety. Part of that weight is depression. And depression is one of the leading causes of death in people today. Depression is a state of being hopeless. Depression is a state of being hopeless. Maybe failed promises. Failed promises. Maybe some promises that someone gave you. You thought things were going to happen as you started that business or as you started that job or as you started that relationship. You thought things were going to get better, but suddenly it never went according to expectation. Those things lead to depression. And if you don't know how to handle depression, depression can lead to health crisis. A lot of people having mental problem today is started with depression. A lot of people with mental problem right now is started with depression. And depression is absence of hope. Depression is absence of hope. When you have too many things you want to do, maybe the income is low. But when the income is low, like I was teaching the business conferences today, and somebody said that people should have multiple streams of income. I say, yes, so it's good though. But people should also have one, this other stream of income called sewing. It's a major stream. Of, this, this thing called sewing is a major stream. The stream of partnership. The stream, uh, the stream of knowing where to sow your seed, knowing where to plant your seed as you can expect a harvest. Because as long as the earth remains seed time and harvest, we don't know what will not cease. Because if you don't, if you're not into sowing. And someone said, but, but I've been sowing before, but I've not been seeing results. But sowing has to be a way of life. It has to be a way of life. God will give you soils. And God will show you places where you sow seeds. And there are situations that come up in life that can be an opportunity for your seed. So when you send that multiple stream of income, all you're thinking about is businesses and job, which is good. But that alone can't get you to where you need to get to. The sowing dimension is important in our faith work. The sowing dimension is important. Because when you need finances to pay bills or to do things, I heard her praying about favor. And that's another factor. Favor factor. Favor. People can have money and you're asking them there is no money. They can have money right now, but that money was not for you. You ask them for 100, 10 million or maybe 5 million or maybe 100,000 maybe something. They say they don't have the money. But somebody just came and asked them just for one million. I said, tomorrow I'll credit your account. There's what they call favor. And when, you, when, when someone lacks favor, they can't penetrate people. Favor is one thing you need to believe God for. That I will have favor with people. The Bible said that Jesus had favor with men and with God. They can have the money. The money is there. They are not doing anything with the money. They are not doing anything with the money. The money is just there. And truth be told, maybe they want to go and shop with the money and maybe do some things. The money is there. And you are asking for the money. They say that it's not available. Favor is the reason why the hearts of people come towards a direction. I'm telling you. It doesn't matter how much your money is. Favor is the reason why the hearts of somebody come towards your direction and say, let me help this person. Let me, let me push this person. And sometimes when people bills are there and all kinds of crises, if they're not careful, it leads to depression, it leads to frustration. And for the the health problem they don't used to have, they start having this problem. 
You don't used to forget something, but now you begin to forget something. Don't work out the past. Go for. Sometimes, like I said in the first service, when you hear that somebody fell, sometimes people were thinking something. They were not focusing on where they were going to until they trip off. The pressure. And most of the pressure is a financially related matter. 86% of health crisis most time is coming from worry. It's coming from worry. It's coming from pressure. You're looking at your children. You're looking at your life. You're asking yourself many questions. Is it what I'll be doing until I become somebody? Or become, you know, all those kind of talk is going on. That is why the scripture said, don't be conformed to this world. Romans 12 verse 2. Romans 12 verse 2. Don't be conformed to this world, but be yet transformed by the renewing of your mind. As your mind is being renewed, it will help you to think in the direction of the will of God. When your mind is renewed, it helps you to stay with the word of God because the word of God will work. I'm telling you, God's word will work. How will you get help for this, for that? You have many things to do, but men, we're going to trust God. What are we going to do? We're going to trust God for the money. We're going to trust God. doesn't matter how many millions it is. God will supply all our needs according to his riches and glory. That's how our supply will come. We're going to trust God. Why? Because if you don't trust God, you risk your health. Why am I teaching people to trust God? It's one of the ways you overcome pressure of life. If you don't know how to trust God, if you're hopeless, you will always be frustrated. You always be mad at people, this person, that person. You don't want to help me. This person doesn't want to help me. No, it is not them that will help you. It is God who touches their heart to remember you. It is God who makes me to ask you, how much would that thing cost? How much would that thing cost? Then he said to cost five million. He said, tomorrow I will do three. They are not borrowing you. They are sending it as a gift to you. That is where you need God's favor. And there are things that trigger the favor of God. Somebody was saying something yesterday and I'm buying faith. He said a lot of people are fasting, praying and crying to God. He said it's good. But he said if you're not active in his kingdom, there are dimensions of favor you cannot walk in. There is a dimension of favor reserved for people whose focus is to build God's kingdom. There is a favor they walk in. You just wonder how these guys have this financial control, this financial flow. Things just happen for them. There is a dimension of favor you begin to experience when the kingdom is your ultimate priority. When what matters to you is what matters most to God. There are dimensions of favor. You're ready to sacrifice anything to ensure that the kingdom of God advances. People like that don't look for favor. You know why? They are pushing the kingdom forward. They are pushing the kingdom of God forward and God is interested in their personal progress. How can you work for somebody eh, that is well to do and you're committed to his work? It will show in your body. It will show in your body. I was talking to one of our boys. The, 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 we were talking, we were driving, coming from somewhere. I said, the favor you're experiencing, I used to know somebody in this church that used to experience that kind of favor many years ago. The favor that people will call you that are not members of this church. Just because you're close to me, you work for me, you're close to me, they will call you and begin to open up resources to you. I didn't tell them. They will come and say, Apostle, this person there around, I better tell them I may come pick up this. Ah, this person. They just want to favor this person. Why are they doing that? I didn't tell them to do that. The person works for me. So people begin to assess him with resources. Begin to help him. They are not helping because of him. They are helping because they are standing with me. There are certain help you have from complete strangers. They see how you are helping. Say, that person, they always they follow you, they come. And then when you go, drop this check with her bag. And they see how this person, they labor with you. There are commitments you give to God. He's not even the church. He's not even the pastor. Because God is in your heart, he starts raising people to keep your focus. Because God knows that your focus needs to be intact for your consistency to continue. And what he does is that he begins to open doors. Friends, let me say this to you. Serving God is not for anybody's benefit. It's for your benefit. Anything you're committed to the kingdom. I remember my father many years ago when I was going to do what God called me to do. He, you know what he told me? He said, you're going to be hungry. You're going to church. You're going to serve God. You want to go and be a pastor. Because my brother left the oil company where he was working for. My brother was making so much money. 
every two, every one month, you come back with so much money, so we have money to spend in the house. And my brother came back and told my father that God was calling him. And my dad lost it. Did the man lose it? Yes. You know why he lost it? His hope was on my brother. That's why you don't make anybody your source. Because they can quit on that job they are doing and your whole life can go down. No, you don't make anybody. Nobody should be your source. God should be your source. Everybody is a channel. Everybody is who? It's a channel. Who is your source? Who is your source? Your husband is not your source. Your wife is not your source. Your boss is not your source. The governor of this state is not your source. The Mr. President is not your source. Your source is God. God can use anybody as a channel to meet your need. Doesn't make them your source. That doesn't make them your source. So when you choose to trust God, I was told it was not going to happen, but I took my own destiny in my hand. I decided to doubt everybody but to believe God. If God said I should go ahead and do this, that he's going to meet me, my brother, forget it too. I did go. Even if I have a one-man squad, I've achieved that goal. Why? I choose to trust God. Most of the health crisis, most of the time, is related to financial situation. I need to treat this from the roots. Most of the health crisis. Have you gone to some people's house? You can just feel the spirit of depression all over the place. Yes, as you don't enter the house, oh my God. Depression is not spiritual. Just pumping 300,000 there. The spirit will jump out. Now I'm telling you, serious to that. What am I telling you? I don't talk story. I don't say, no, I bind the spirit of depression. Because after they bind, they finish. There are bills you don't bind. You pay the bills. Do you bind bills? No, you don't bind bills. As you draw, maybe all the need they have was a need of over close to, pressing need I'm talking about, is over close to 180,000. And all those bills were paid. The person had this freeness. Oh my God, thank God. And I had extra 120,000 maybe to buy other things to take. There is this piece that just returned. It's, I didn't say we'll cast that devils. That money will drive that spirit out. I tell you, one of the ways to cast that devils out is by money. I just tell you, this thing I tell you, go me, I say, pastor, the pastor was, has prayed, oh, prayed. Nothing was moving. Pray. <laughs> and was tired of ministry. And somebody came to visit him. He thought it was a usual visit of pray for me or one story or the other. And the person put her in his pocket and swiped out a check of over 40 million. The guy's skin started recovering immediately, instantly. In skin, just had a, you don't see recovery. You don't see what will face change. If you think, I'm not talking crap, I'm telling you truth. I'm not here to give you story, story. I'm telling you, we're solving the problem and I'll tell you how to solve your problem. The guy's skin started changing. His movement changed. The die when one die, no die again. <laughs> die, no die again. Anybody say poverty, good man, call me that man, pray for her. If you say poverty, good, come out here, I go pray for you, I go increase them. And that was how the guys was ministry started growing. Some church growth come by money. When the pastor is happy, he's glad, he prays for people, things happen for them. There are churches going at the pastor, they first for the members, they first for everybody. You, they worry me too much. You, they worry me in the message. <laughs> there are places you go this morning. If you see the fundraising, they will give up from up to five times. You never do. Sit for this, sit for that, sit for this, sit for that. Sit for people that are looking for baby of the womb. Sit for people that their leg has broken. Sit for people that are blind. Sit for the dead. Okay. 
And I don't blame them most times. <laughs> Did you ever hear that the blessings of the Lord make it rich? <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You hear the financial report. A pastor heard the financial report of the church after Sunday service. The man collapsed. I'm telling you what caused the health crisis most of the time. And that is why trusting God, can somebody say trusting God, is the key to greater things. Having your roots in God will sustain your vision. Having your roots in God that the word of God becomes the focus that no matter what you're going through, I've decided to believe what God has said. I don't believe in how I feel. I believe what God has said. In every aspect of life, your ability to trust God is what makes the difference. Your healing is in the word. You take that word of God and you begin to meditate on that word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is somebody receiving today? Huh? Is somebody hearing understanding today? Instead of worrying about it, trust God for it. Instead of being depressed. Instead of being depressed, you're doing something for God and you notice that things are not working well. That is not when to pull your hand and say, after all, nobody care for me. No. Your faithfulness in the kingdom will lead to your increase. He says, serve the Lord. He will bless your bread and your water. And he will take away sickness from your midst. He says, serve the Lord. That you're giving this commitment not because of religion or tradition. You're giving this commitment because you love the kingdom. Amen. Glory be to God. You serve the Lord with all your hearts. You stay committed. You stay connected. Even when others are telling you, ah, how much are they giving you in that place? Why are you asking me how much are they giving me? How much will you be able to solve my problem? Except the Lord builds the house. What happened? He said the builder builds it in vain. It is God who builds life. And that is why when you choose to trust him, he comes for you. He said, my son, attend to my word. Attend to my word. Then verse 25, he said, for they are life. They are life to those that find them and hell to all their flesh. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 22. He said, for they are life to those that find them. God's word is life. God's word is life. God's word is life. Romans 10, 17, so then faith comes by hearing. You continue to hear about your healing and health. You continue to hear about who God has made you to be. God's word is health. There is a health in the word. You tell yourself, well, long life will God satisfy me. You wake up, somebody wake up, and you notice there is this pain you're feeling. You say, he took my infirmity. He took my infirmity. He has taken my infirmity away. The pain is coming. You're always having that pain. You stand up. You, let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 8. Let's go to Matthew chapter 8. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. In Matthew gospel chapter 8. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Matthew chapter 8, look at verse 16. In Matthew 8 verse 16, he said, when evening has come, they brought to him men who were demon possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, but that was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. He took our infirmity. Do you know what it means to be saying that scripture every morning? He took my infirmity. In the name of Jesus, I have no infirmity. That's the confession to keep. He took my infirmity. 
He took this high blood pressure. Let me start making it easy for somebody to understand. He took this cancer. He took this weakness. I'm always being weak. He took the weakness in the name of Jesus. The weakness is gone. He took the depression. He took the frustration. He took the pain. You consistently making that confession. He took it. He took my pain. He took the stress. He took the frustration. You're looking at yourself and saying, is it not better I die than to live? No, it's better to live than to die. Because you have not fulfilled your destiny. This situation you're seeing today will change tomorrow. This situation will change. I'm talking to somebody right now. I don't know what you're going through. I said, but this situation will change. This situation is not forever. And sometimes when people go through things, they think it's forever. My own personal life has taught me something. Somebody asked me a question. What, what kept you going even with all the things that are going on? I said, I just decided to live my life. I decided to go forward. See, I like to work with you. But if you don't want to work with me, I'll work alone. No, but that's true. I like to work with people. But if somebody tells me, I don't want to work with you, I will not allow your attitude to extract my energy from my vision. Because I know God will send somebody that will help me in that area. So I will not allow your heart. Because most of us, when something go, when things go wrong in our life, the next thing is like our whole life will end in that situation. No. It shouldn't end there. That one area of your life is not making progress doesn't mean the entire area of your life should be shut down. You can't shut down your entire life because your marriage went bad. You can't shut down your entire life because you never passed the exam. You can't shut down your entire life because one area of your life is not working. There are other areas you need to cultivate and develop. Let me say this to you. Success is energy. There is an energy that comes from success. I'm telling you. That you succeeded in a particular area of life. It helps to bring circulate energy to other areas of your life. I refuse to worry. I refuse to worry. I refuse to be depressed. I refuse to be controlled by fear. Oh, what is going to happen in Nigeria? Oh, what is going to happen? Everybody go die, oh. Everybody go die, oh. Everybody will die. Even if they come to the worst, everybody will not die. Some people will survive to continue. And you'll be among those people. <laughs> That's how to think. When the people are dying, the people are dying, oh, send me, I will leave. Will long life will God satisfy me? A U.S. soldier went for war with Psalm 91 in his pocket. Psalm 91. When the battle becomes fierce and challenging, he will bring it out. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Put them back. Go, 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 go. Continue. When the war, when it gets tough, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High under the shadow will I abide. A thousand shall fall at my side, and ten thousand on my right hand, he shall not get near me. Go, 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 go. Well, he came back from the wall. The bullets, a thousand will fall by his side. Ten thousand on his right hand. Stay with the wall. That's your protection. You don't bank on government promises. Even them, they're looking for who to secure them. As it's getting hot. You bank on the promises of the world. Where I am, the fight will not get to that place. Where I am, the war will not get to that place. Where I am, the peace of God. Standing on, and can I say this to you? The days ahead of us as a nation, somebody need to know the world to stand to live. The days ahead of us as a nation, you need to know the word of God to stay alive. I'm not prophesying, I'm just telling you. You need to know the word to fulfill your destiny. And let me say this to you. Psalm 91 should be part of what should be in your bag. Your ma- a thousand shall fall at my side and ten thousand on my right hand it shall not get near me. When you hear this news that this is what you know another, another area where you need to watch out. Stop listening to news that is not giving you hope. Stop listening to news that make you ask questions who will survive. Your health is at risk. Listen to things that give you life. If they say war is coming, it has not got to you now. Relax first now. Some people will die by the voice of the bullets 
not because of the bullets. Some people will hear, go, 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 go. Hey, I don't die. You. Ah, I die at once. Don't die like that. Say the blessings of the Lord make it what? And he had no what? No sorrow. He does everybody go die. Say me, I go remain. To rule Nigeria. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> no, me, I, go, I will be among those that will remain. <laughs> By my confession, I stay. I choose when to go. I choose when to go. I choose what? When to go. You cannot die like a chicken. He said, no weapon form against you shall prosper. It's part of your confection. Stop living in fear. I don't know what is going to happen. No, I don't know. What will happen is the word of God in your life. Stay with the word. That's where to stay. When you live in fear, you, open, you make your body vulnerable to sickness and disease. There is a new. Have you ever been happy before? You're happy dancing. You're dancing. You're happy dancing. And there's somebody, one phone call. Hey! Jesus. Jesus. Hey! You're happy that all the, all the joy evaporated. You will not die for anybody. <laughs> all the joy evaporated. I pray one prayer. I say, God, please don't bring problem people around me. I want to go out to my life. <laughs> no, they're serious. Though. No, sometimes you're just, you know, God, I want, I want multiplication. Yeah. You're so happy. You're happy. You're rejoicing. You're happy. You just, you, you don't even get more, more, much money. You don't go buy two and me two. Oh, first people will get powerful stomach. Eh? But two. Don't buy, okay. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. Deji, don't call yourself. <laughs> buy two and they boil it, finish. I went and bought one of their big Pepsi. Sign of victory. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> they said, let me have my birthday party. <laughs> I'm from nowhere. Crazy news. Crazy news. Their joy just evaporated. You will not have that experience. It is good news that will come to you. No emergency will overtake you. I said no emergency will overtake you. There is no emergency situation that will overtake you in the name of Jesus. I pray for you this morning that by the spirit of God you'll be strong, you'll be healthy, you'll be going from strength to strength in the name of Jesus. Some people are planning, having a project planning from nowhere. One call, somebody just died and the person is not a death you can avoid. Somebody that is very close to you. That's that is the you know the frustration, the stress, the pressure, all kinds of things begins to build up. Maintaining your joy is retaining your health. Maintaining your joy is retaining your health. The joy of the Lord is my strength. It doesn't matter what they said, I choose to rejoice. I choose to maintain your joy is to retain your strength. You know what we solve everybody's problem in this life? Like I said in first service, the ones you can't handle, tell them, I cannot handle this. Did somebody hear me very well? And it is not wrong to say no. No matter the pressure. Can I hear a better amen? The one way no fee handle, say no fit uh, handle. Don't help people to a point that you, you now begin to feel bad. I won't use this thing now. Now, you know, you are not happy giving it. Don't give. Anything you are not happy to give, I don't give it out. It's no longer a seed. Anything you don't have the peace of giving, I don't give it out. It doesn't matter the prophecy that come. Keep it. He said, God will. He said, He loves a cheerful giver. Somebody who is cheerful in their giving, He loves them. Know that you're not happy, you want to give it out. I see some people, sometimes they, they, uh, God tell them, don't give that thing out. And because of pressure, the other person is putting on them, they have to give it out. And they now begin to complain. I've been no one give an to. I've been no one give an to. I don't time for this kind of thing. Why are you complaining? Just tell them no. 
Just tell them no. Nothing will happen. Are you God? I don't know who I'm ministering to. Tell them no. Now I cannot be able to help you. That money is not for helping somebody. I want to go and buy canvas. And where? And take care of myself. God knows I'll be a giver. Is it because I did not give to this person to make me that I'm not more a giver? Do you know what I gave yesterday? Ah. Now for this matter, I say no. There are some of you when people come and ask you for something and you don't have it, you will now begin to explain your situation. What are you explaining? Them that came to meet you, why, why did they come to meet you? Did they hear your name is First Bank? Even you be. Is it not somebody who went to bank the other day and I told him that since you have been standing in the front of this bank, have they called to give you water? Say, so since we don't stand for this front of this bank, uh, take water, drink. Did they give you? I said, did they give me? Uh, they didn't give me. Even at church now, so I would say, uh, they don't give me anything. Bank, we don't stand there. They, they can't money inside since. No give anything. No give anything. No give anything. Go there tomorrow now. Go bank tomorrow. Or carry your ATM card. Just, just have like a let someone that have like uh, 500 in their, eight, uh, in their bank account carry, go to ATM machine put that card and type 10,000 I say I'm suffering in this country share the oil money, pay 10,000 pray God that your card does not hook and I'm telling you pray to God that your card come back to you normal and don't have a stamp on it. Or that you can't charge. The Bible said the blessings of the Lord makes rich. One of the reasons for health, uh, for, for health crisis sometimes is that when we begin to worry about things we shouldn't be worrying about. And I'm ministering to somebody right now. There are some of you now, you're worrying about your mother. You're worrying about your sister. Some of you are worrying about your children. I used to tell my mother now. She will now begin to worry about adults. Adults. Full grown men. I say, no, like your life. We'll be worrying. This person now, how is this person doing? How is this person doing? And yes, as a mother, you like to worry. But when they don't pass 25 years, stop worrying. Oh, but go find job too. Okay, come on. Go and learn something and fix your life. You cannot be worrying about people that are supposed to be helping you. You worry until you go for. Now, nah, pastor stroke on the come. Because of worry. You take care of your mind. You take care of your health. How do you take care of your health? By having peace of mind. And peace of mind is a decision. No. Peace doesn't mean there will be no trouble around you. Inside the trouble, it used to be peaceful. Trouble, fool. Yeah, this person, they shout. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they shout, woo! But they shout, hey! But they shout, woo! But they shout, hey! Inside of there, they say, blessings of the Lord make a rich and hard sorrow. You need to hear all these shouts when they shout. No, I don't want to hear them. I want to hear the peace. Peace does not mean there is no troubles around you. That in the midst of those troubles, you choose to be relaxed. That's what peace is. Peace is not that everything is perfect. That's not what it means. Peace is not that everybody loves you. Peace is not that everybody's on your side. Sometimes you're having an opposition, but inwardly said, I choose to be peaceful. The kind of, the kind of poverty would have felt for this country, who would they? The kind of poverty. The poverty they make some people know what they write. You can park your car on the way somewhere and park it very well. Though. Some people will come and say, Ah, he didn't buy the car. Eh? And they see your car. Okay, eh, no verse. Now find something for the boys. That is how devastating is this right now. Find something what they are begging now. Okay, time is I never eat. Tell me, open time is say, uh, Sir, I've not eaten. Can you give me food? I think. Okay. As a Christian, if you have money, see, even your enemies, they said you help them, eh? I want to take this 500, 1,000, 2,000. I want to buy food, sure, eat. Then I park very well. He said I didn't park very well. And then find out something. Find out something for where? 
Do I say something? So that is how the effect. And when you look at all of them, I was telling them on Friday. I said, see how they look, all of them, their body? You see their body, all of them? Do they look like blessed people? All of them, you look at their skis like they came out from one place. There are jobs you shouldn't take in your life. Did you hear what I'm saying right now? People will do it to worship you. You shouldn't be the person, I'm saying this as your pastor, you shouldn't be the person that your job is to look for the fault of people, for their downfall, and then to make money out of their pain. Nothing that can work. You know, fit you. Take job that you be happy. Not somebody they give money, they swear for the money. That's why people cannot do some things. They gather everything to not solve their problem. You cannot be extorting from people and be peaceful. It doesn't work that way. You know, get peace. The Bible said the blessings of the Lord do what? Make it rich and add no what? No sorrow. One of the ways that, one of the key things you need to do to stay healthy is to choose to let go hot. Offense. Hot. Those things lead to sickness and disease. That's another reason why people are sick. The man will steal your land since 2040. You never forgive him. The man that collected uh, 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 come and took your wife from you since in the 80s. You have been swearing for the man. He said, if that woman was alive, was here now, my life could have changed. You have not forgiven that matter. That matter is still there for your mind fresh next morning. Next morning, he said, get malaria. The other day, he said, get uh, uh, appendix. The other day, he said, not this one. Those things, you need to drop them. Say, I don't know why you, I go just tell like this, I go forget something, I go forget something, I go forget, I don't know why they forget something. Many things where they think we're supposed to live. You have never forgiven your husband since that talk went talk for her since. You never forgive. You see, they kind of, sometimes you go say, come go fall. Why are you the fall? When they make you the fall? The pressure. Before marriage, you are saying, no be so. Eh? How many of them when they're born now, they're born now with my wife when I come out from the same womb? Marriage, marriage, Africa, wonder. Not so. Not so. Not so. Two of them are just come out. Who tell them I said two of them are just come out? There is one couple I used to see. I know they are not real couple. They are bewitched. Anywhere you see the man, you go see the woman. They are all, that thing is not normal. F marriage is freedom. Just because I marry you, nobody say, any, if I want to wear my shoe, all of us go wear the same shoe. I'll go wear the same shoe. You get your own shoe now. Then you get your own shoe. Wear your shoe, I beg. You go, as, as you see them on the road, they, have, they say they are in love. Which love? They are not in love, they are in madness. What time where you go use work, get money to feed the family now? You don't go pay bills. I don't know what people are thinking. You think marriage means that oh, we always step on one side at the center. That's not what it means. You will go look for a job. You go do business. You go move around. You go do things. They come. The woman, you go stay with the woman. They look. And who have called you? I want to check your phone to know. You go soon die. They go soon bury you. All you're looking. Hey, hey, why, why that man greeting like that? Why that man greeting like that? That's not be greeting like that. Hey, don't you know you're a married man? Why not tell that you're a married woman? What is your problem? People marry you. Since when they marry, you don't get peace. They don't get rest. The man beep, you don't increase. The woman beep, you don't increase. As they marry you, they, they, how can somebody be coming from, coming back from, coming to his house? He's praying that there will be no fight in the house. Masha Kataro Kotoro, me, I go throw you outside. How can they pray to come meet you? I can they pray, man, I get peace. Why? No, I can't. No, no. This is my house. I will have peace here. No. What kind of marriage is that one? Marriage that you'll come back. Hey, make you not start fight. Oh. Make you not start fight. Oh. Make the man not start fight. Call the man a madman. Anytime he they go off. They go off all the time. Going off all the time. People should have peace for meeting you. People should go to church and give thanks to him. Say they meet you. Say, ah God, I thank you so I meet this woman. Oh. God, I thank you so I meet this man. Know that you are not a prayer point. Stay one place when you make the prayer work. Make as they pray. Make it work. Now, part 
of the things where they cause the health crisis. You know, come back you're from work, your mind don't jump. You don't know what your husband will talk. You don't know what your wife will talk. How can people live with you and they don't have peace? They should be coming back home and buy ice cream. Not that we are going to lick it in joy. This is an appetite ice cream way by. This is an ice cream. I tell you, I won't lick ice cream. That's how you, you always, there are people that they always want to spoil the atmosphere. All, see, once there is happiness, so happiness threatens them. Peace threatens them. Once there is happiness, there is, that's why some men die quick now. Do you know that we will have more women that are widowed than men? There are more men dying. Some wife, when they come, will pressure here. You know, be here. Then will pressure the man until they, this, this guy used to be a nice man. Now the man is a drunker. He drinks now. The wife got this be. Hey, my mother has never be that more. Listen, they're not married to build us when our family people look. Let's certainly this morning know. The reason why the man come and ask your hand in marriage, not to build house for now. So if not that place when I put in my mind, I remove in my mind. If he build for now, good. If he not build, that is not his job. You build your house. I have one of my sons, when he wants to go and get married, they get father and say, hey, you know, I have a house in the village, you need to complete it. I said, Gany. Complete what? What are we completing? So, that I'm marrying your daughter now, make me a contractor here. Even contractors, they used to pay them for services. Pressure. Pressure. No. No, 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 no. Don't carry your personal project. Hey, you see that, that my car is getting old. If this guy wants to marry, let him buy me a new car. Hey, why are they descend so low now? It's not their job to buy your car. The Bible said the blessings of the Lord. Make it what? It makes rich. And your peace will come in following God. And let me say this other side too. There are men who causes their wife to become so depressed. There are men who quarrel more than a woman. When they start talking, they are talking to the end. They are talking across three days. Three days they are still talking. Four days, one month. Amen. Sometimes I say, man, you just relax peaceful. If something happens among your wife and children, you call them and say to them, be the peacemaker. Not the one who, the, the way you will always want to be stressed out. And truth be told, as you're growing old as a man, it's not every matter that you should talk about. Yes. For the sake of your health. Something is here and say, ah, why don't I do like this? I don't do like that again. You rest. You go work finish. Bring salary, come house to feed children. The same time you come to fight this house. Every week you're fighting. Every week you're fighting. Sometimes you give yourself peace. You give yourself break. Even children when they go promise with the ring bell for them, bang I break time. Give yourself break from some issues. Give yourself break from some matters. It's not every matter that you should get involved into. There are things I don't want to know about. Because those things sometimes generate health crisis. Where you are sitting down, you're worrying, worrying. What is going to happen in the house right now? If you're here, you're married to anyone, you're in any marriage, please give them peace. Give them peace. What all means, look for peace. Your heart shouldn't be like a WWE. Even in WWE, they're making money. WWE, they're making money. See, people finish fighting $50,000, $100,000, one million dollars. Finish just win a fight, one million dollars. They'll go buy a car, live where? You, you and your wife, they punch on yourself. No money, they come out of that punch. Stop it. Stop it. Stop the punch. Stop that. Stop it. If the woman come bring for herself, honey, please, let's use this energy and think well. Let's use this energy and plan well. I'm not talking to someone right now. Let's use this energy to plan well. It's not every time one quarrel, one issue. And stop seeing too much. Some of you see too much. You suspect a lot. Suspicious. <laughs> don't wear. Hey, don't make phone call. Hey, in there with anybody. In, 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 ah! You don't get personal vision. There should be a personal vision. Give yourself a vision. It will lead to good health. 
One of the keys to good health is when you have a vision you're pursuing in life. When you have something you're pursuing, a vision you're pursuing, it will give you a good health. But when there is no vision, all you see is problem, all you see is crisis, all you see is situation, you will not be peaceful. Imagine you I come every day as the pastor of this church. I'm almost done. I come every day as the pastor of this church and I want to worry about the offering. Hey, you know, say the way our offering did not save. Oh, I won't live long. I won't live long. Well, I'm going to worry about the members. I don't what is happening to them. What is going on? I trust everybody in the hands of God. I commit you before God. God knows how to handle your matter. I may not know how to handle your matter, but God knows how to handle your matter. That's one of the ways you give yourself peace. That's one of the ways you give your rest. Give yourself a rest. It is better to be healthy than to look for healing. That's what I'm teaching like this. It is those things that will cause those health crises. Now you start looking for healing. Your BP to go up. No, 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 no. Give yourself some peace. Give yourself some joy. Learn to be thankful. Learn to be grateful. No matter what happens to you, always know that God is your source. No matter the situation you see, always thank God and give him praise, knowing that he will make it good for your sake. Always remember that God has helped you this far. He will continue to help you. Always learn to tell yourself, it's not getting worse, it's getting better. Learn to do that and peace will stay with you. I pray for you that you be made whole. I pray for you, if there is an attitude that is affecting your health, I pray by the Spirit of God that you detach from that attitude. In the name of Jesus, I pray if there is a matter that you have been carrying in your heart, that have hurted you, that have offended you, I pray you receive healing from that offense in the name of Jesus. I pray you are delivered from hurt, from hurt, from betrayal, from issues of offense. May you be delivered from it in the name of Jesus. I speak peace over you. I speak rest over you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Let's rise and give God thanks. Father, we thank you. Oh, Father, we thank you. Peace. Somebody go ahead and thank him. Somebody go ahead and give him praise. Oh, go ahead and give him praise. The word of God is a medicine. I choose the path of peace. I choose to be peaceful. I choose to walk in joy. May this word come to your spirit. When things want to come up, he said, no, I choose joy. I, I choose to be joy. I choose to be in peace. I choose to be in rest. I choose to be in victory. When situation that will lead to opposition come up, say, no, no, no. I refuse to give attention to this. I choose to trust God. Father, we thank you. I pray for you this morning that wisdom will come upon you. I pray for you this morning that understanding will come upon you. I pray for you this morning that the strength of God will come upon you. I choose to walk by faith and not by sight. Receive strength. Receive favor. Receive understanding. Receive the grace to arise and shine in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. And I pray for everybody that is sick here. If you're sick in any part of your body, put your hands there. Father, in the name of Jesus, I release your healing anointing upon people. Today is our healing school. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed right now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be delivered from any form of satanic oppression in the name of Jesus. May God strengthen you in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we lift up our offering?